Hello and welcome to my new video. If you're new here, hi, I'm Lex. Today we are touring a really important island. I want to spotlight right here at the beginning that this flag is based off of Lisa's cat. Lisa is the island creator. This is her cat, Charlie, who keeps her company. And I just want to spotlight this good girl. Look at her the island flag welcome to the island of milana by lisa lisa is me underscore and my underscore island on twitter i will link her social media and her website below but this island milana that is a hawaiian based word which means calming or relaxing which is super fitting because this island is a spotlight on the chronic illness myalgic encephalomyelitis or chronic fatigue syndrome we don't talk about this illness enough and so lisa really created this whole island to encourage people to research, understand, and fund research for this chronic illness that is really just not well known enough. So many people suffer from it and it's a really disabling illness. So I'm excited to go through this island with you. It's truly an honor, Lisa, to be on your island today. Thank you for having us. Right here at the entrance, we have a shovel. That is because there's actually a sort of scavenger hunt, like a treasure hunt on the island. You can dig up five hidden objects that will allow you to have your own Blue Sunday tea party. We will talk about Blue Sunday later in the tour. We also have a blue sparkler. This island is blue themed as that is the color of the ribbon that is associated with ME. We also have a tiny party cap, oh my gosh. Look at us go, I'm so, I love this, oh my gosh. So right here at the entrance, obviously we have some wheelchairs really showing how disabling this disease is. And I love the, the blue lights that light up this pathway. Let's take a look at the map before we head on out and explore. I love this. It's really organized, well set up. There's definitely a defined path that you can go and explore. There are actually three set paths for the island. We will be taking each of them. You can choose one or you can go along all of them, but we'll be taking the rest route first. There are three different ones that Lisa has created to kind of guide your way. There are also these little benches around the island. This one says pace. There are also benches that say stop and rest, you know, emphasizing that people with ME are easily exhausted and they definitely need a lot of rest after any activity, whether it be physical, emotional, or mental. Look at these little butterflies. I love this island already. So here we are at Resident Services. We can see the three pathways. The first one is Brain Fog. We will go down this path eventually. There's also the Fund route where you can learn why it's important to fund research for ME. Here is a little rest bench right at Resident Services. I love that the post, the, I almost said the post office. The mailbox is right here too. And then we will be taking the rest route first. So that just really emphasizes important aspects of ME. Like I said, people with ME have to rest very frequently and often just resting will not get rid of the fatigue. It is, it is a chronic problem for people who suffer from this illness. Look at this, even the little, the paper lanterns have the stop symbols on them. I love a blue theme. A lot of you know my favorite color is blue, so I appreciate this decor. We've got really calming, not busy beaches. Let's go this way and check it out. Oh, we must have two houses on the island. I didn't even notice. Because there was a second mailbox there. These are so pretty. I love this decor. Also, check this out. There's a bed here. Very cute. Here at Able Sisters, you can see this line of ME clothing. The butterfly is beautiful. I love that dress too. And you can have a little ME cap. There's even a blue scooter here. I really appreciate all of the blue. This is, this is my vibe. I really like how easy to navigate all of the pathways are too. It's really easy to find your way around. 
And here is a rest area. Let's go and check out Lisa's house really quick. Oh, I love this. Look at this little welcome mat home. Oh, actually, I'm really curious while it's over here. Hold on. There's just a pathway leading back here. That's so cute. And we've got like a rainbow theme going on with these flowers. I love it. Even the little lilies of the valley. Okay. I said I was going in her house. Let me, let me go do that. So in this main room, you can already see preparations being taken for the Blue Sunday Tea Party. Blue Sunday was an event created by Anna Redshaw, another person with ME, and it was just this celebration for people who were unable to celebrate their own, you know, events. Anna was unable to celebrate her birthday due to ME, and so she encouraged her family to celebrate with tea and a slice of cake. That's what we see here. And part of the event is encouraging people who participate to donate the money that they would spend on a tea and a slice of cake to a foundation supporting ME research. So I'll also link that down below in case you want to donate, in case you want to contribute to research for this illness. That is what Blue Sunday is and that's what you can go around hunting for. You can see already the preparations taking place in this room. So we'll go and explore some of the others too. I'll only be spotlighting the rooms that Lisa mentions on her website, but this is the office space that she created. It represents her own advocacy for ME. It represents the time she spends writing her blog, trying to raise awareness for the illness. And yeah, it's she writes articles about ME. And we can see that here, you know, this space that's designed to help her do that. I also appreciate the photos of all of the villagers. How cute are they? This basement is actually a sad room. It represents all of the things that people with ME might miss out on due to their illness. So it's hobbies, events, just important things that they want to do and find themselves unable to when they are forced to rest. This upstairs room is supposed to represent, you know, a relaxing, calming space, but it is important to note that when people with ME are in bed, they aren't just relaxing, they're not just resting, they are literally having to recharge. Lisa said that even if she simply goes on a coffee date with a friend, it could take hours for her to have to rest and recharge before she can engage in any sort of activity again. These headphones on the table represent the sensitivity that people with ME can experience, sensitivity both to light and sound, and whenever Lisa experiences this, she says she has to put on her noise-canceling headphones until her symptoms improve. So that's just an important thing to note, something to understand, is that they're not just relaxing. Like, this is a challenge for them to overcome. I also wanted to note right outside the house, there is this car that is surrounded by weeds. It's kind of overgrown. This represents Lisa's car, which she gave up when she first fell ill because she didn't feel like she had the concentration to be able to drive safely. So this was a big moment for her. You know, she knew when she decided to sell her car that she would no longer be able to work full time. That she wasn't going to be recovering anytime soon. Um, she felt like her independence had been lost. So this is a really important thing on the island too, to understand. Again, recalling that the villager houses here represent carers for people with ME. I think that's really beautiful. I think it's really sweet to think of the Animal Crossing villagers as carers, as being responsible and helpful. I also love to see how many blue items Lisa managed to work into this island. We have the campsite over here, a mini gas station too. I think all of the decor is so beautiful. And again, I love the simple beaches. They're not like overwhelming. This island itself is very, very calming and restful, which I guess with its name is very fitting. Now I'm curious about where this goes. Oh, this is the other end of the hybrid flower garden. So it looks like this is a cafe of sorts. The secret beach is also part of this cafe, a little outdoor seating space. I don't know if this villager is home. Nah, oh, but it's Tia, that's so fitting, okay. 
So this was the rest route, really peaceful, easy to walk through, and very beautifully designed. I love all of these blue flowers that are about. You can also climb up here, I think. And here's Filbert. What a little king. And here's a little relaxing pool area. And there's even a rock garden. Ah, oh, and it's, it's functional still. You can still hit all of the rocks. There's space. Oh, and this is part of the fun drought. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. I think we got to see all of the important elements of the rest route. So our next route will be the brain fog route. So this like foggy custom design pathway sort of represents that. If you want to see the custom designs used on this island, you can check out Lisa's website in the description. And I'll also post the custom designs that she sent me for your perusal. Look at the little gyroids. They're so precious. Oh my gosh, and the blue duck up here. That is adorable. So we're just gonna kinda follow this pathway around. How beautiful is all of this blue decor? This route emphasizes the fact that people with ME can suffer cognitive dysfunction or brain fog, and that includes symptoms like short-term memory loss, difficulty concentrating, and problems with word finding. Uh, this area right here is a maze. Lisa says that it can make it really brain fog, I mean, can make it really difficult to function. So this pathway is winding and it sets you the challenge of having to find your way through, which can be really difficult. Apparently, if we keep going, we can find blathers in the museum and maybe we'll enjoy, you know, a cup of joe at the roost. This is so cute. Look at this, like, ship. Oh my gosh. You know, I hate to admit it, but I am also already kind of lost. Don't know where I am. Oh, here's a volcano. Okay, I found my way through to this home, which is beautifully decorated as well. I love all of this, like, lush vegetation we have around the house. Oh, this is beautiful. We've got the brain fog symbol here on these stepping stones. You can keep going. Here is another villager house up here. Again, we've got, you know, these symbols reminding us to rest, to stop, to pace. I think this is Filbert's house based on the furniture around here. I love that the the villager houses are really matchy matchy here. Oh, and look at this. Okay. Also, before we move away from Ion's house, you can get up here via this ladder. Ion's house really represents the fact that people with ME can be housebound or even bedbound, which is really isolating. So Ion herself is here kind of isolated from the other houses. We're going to go down here. The shoes represent the millions missing shoe display. The millions missing uh, protests were first created in early 2016 by the ME Action Network. Uh, protesters placed empty pairs of shoes outside prominent government buildings, representing the millions of patients around the world who are missing from their lives due to ME, due to chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, Lisa has recreated this in front of the museum, which, by the way, we have finally found the museum, too. Look at this little froggy chair! I love this. You can go hang out with Blathers if you want to. We're gonna continue on this little tour here. Uh, I think it's really great also that Lisa actually made a post online inviting people with ME to donate a pair of shoes and if they didn't have Animal Crossing, she allowed them to pick whatever pair they wanted to represent them. So these shoes are not just random, they do represent real people in the real world who have ME and play Animal Crossing. So this is just a really powerful moment, I think. I think that completes our brain fog route. So now we're gonna go back and complete the funding route. I 
do want to just look at this really quickly. Very beautiful, very beautiful terraforming. And we also have found Nook's Cranny. All right, here we are ready to look at the funding route. So it's important to know that not much is understood about the illness in terms of treatment and cures. There are things that can lessen the symptoms, medications that are available, but there is no cure for ME. So and like by donating, by enhancing the research, it is hoped that some kind of cure can be found for this illness. Uh, this rock garden that we saw earlier actually is a part of the funding route. You can hit the rocks and hope for some gold for funding. We'll head this way. We've got like fancy things here, you know, pricey things going on, kind of reminding you of the wealth that could be going into this research. You can also, this is like a little diagram, you can understand how the bell bags that you can bury grow into money trees. Here's another villager home as well, overlooking the millions missing display. This graveyard honors the people who have died from ME and it does emphasize how important it is to understand that this illness is serious, it can be fatal. The blue rose that we've seen around the island is actually a symbol of death in the ME community and honoring all those that we have lost to this illness. This is a research tent that we're going to look at. So this little tent here represents research. You can see, you know, the little, the lab experiment going on and putting the pieces of the puzzle together, trying to figure out what we're missing and uh, hopefully, you know, be able to help all of these people who suffer with ME. It's also important that Nook's Cranny does follow along the funding route, you know, spending money, do you get it? So one last thing I wanted to show on the island this is Raymond's house. He is noted on Lisa's website as the carer for the island. And he represents, you know, the fact that in addition to people with ME, the carers for them often feel loss of life because they have to, you know, they have to be present for the person who has ME and it can impact their ability to work or participate in social activities in their own life. These are often family members of the individual diagnosed with ME. Raymond's house borders on a sort of farm. You know, this represents the hard work that carers do in order to support their their loved one with ME. There's even an orchard here. And I think this is just a really beautiful way to represent the hard work and dedication that goes into caring for someone who is struggling with this disabling illness. If you visit the island, remember to dig things up. Here I've just found my first present, so we'll open it up and see what it is, how we can participate in our own blue Sunday. So here's an afternoon tea set. I love that, that's so cute. If you go and visit, let me know how many of the items you find. Comment what they are. Thank you all so much for watching today. I hope that you understand how important this island is, how crucial it is to raise awareness for this chronic illness and Lisa, thank you so much again, not only for allowing us to visit your island, but for all of the hard work that you put into this island, into raising awareness, and for your super resourceful, helpful website. For those of you watching, remember to check out the website to read more about Lisa's design process and just to learn more about ME. Thank you all for watching today, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!